Hello. Today, what we will be doing is talking about labor intensive and capital intensive production. The objectives for today would be understand the reasons why firms adopt, uh, adopt these different forms of production. So, whether it was labor or capital intensive, we'll understand uh, what the firm will choose and why. Describe the advantages and disadvantages of either using uh, labor or capital. And the last objective for today would be analyze what determines the demand for FOPs, including the demand for the product, the relative prices of different factors of production, and their availability and productivity. So right now, what we are going to do is we have two different pictures and this one as you can see we have farmers okay and mainly we can see workers so because of that this sector is relying on workers or on labor and not on capital we would call it labor intensive production okay it is common in many service industries and also in the agricultural sector now for instance when i'm talking about service industry i'm talking about banks i'm talking about uh, hospitals i'm talking about schools they rely mainly on labor but definitely they use machines in order to enhance production but mainly we consider them labor intensive in the second photo we can see machines they are uh, producing cars so mainly car production relies heavily on capital or on machines and this is why we would call it capital intensive production now we will start talking about the second objective which was describe the advantages and disadvantages of each um, this table it is on your book page uh, 227 okay we will start with the advantages of both capital and labor intensive production let's read each and every objective the first uh, uh, advantage i mean i'm sorry the first advantage when i'm talking about capital intensive products can be mass produced so for example who relies heavily on machines is it the small or the large firms it would be the large firms why because they do something called massive production and it means they are producing in great quantities okay now the thing about it and you will see later on the disadvantage this would um, um, come up with a disadvantage which is all the products mainly become standardized yani all products uh, look the same okay now the second advantage mass production will reduce the average cost we already explained this in previous lessons the more they produce since they already have the machines and they already bought the machines or they're paying the rent for the machines why not take advantage and produce more so um, this will lead to the reduction in average cost um, also one advantage we we are relying on machines so we don't need to employ uh, as much labor as before so we are cutting down on paying wages and salaries uh, the fourth advantage of being capital um, intensive there is less risk of disruption to production from shortages of labor or from industrial disputes Industrial disputes, this we spoke about it when we were explaining trade unions. So you do not have workers complaining or I don't have the problem of not finding um, a worker. Everything is okay. Why? Because I am relying on machines and not on workers. And um, workers will not be nagging here. We're working overtime. You have to pay us overtime and so on. No because i'm relying on machines and i can let the machine work for 24 hours so automated production can be continuous non-stop all day the final advantage of being capital um, intensive 
programmed equipment cannot lose skill or concentration. So they don't, um, the machine won't complain, ye, um, we are bored or we cannot concentrate anymore or we are tired. No. So also because of that, and there is no complaints from the machine, there will be less risk of human error. And the quality of the products will definitely become better. It will increase. Now, let's talk about the advantages of being labor intensive. Advantage of relying on workers and not on machines. Now, here I don't have the problem of having standardized products. So uh, workers are producing um, different products, different styles and so on. And uh, the good thing about it, they could be personalized for the customers. Okay. And now also when I hire unskilled labor and this we took it also in previous lessons, unskilled labor, they don't really ask for high salaries or high wages. Since I am labor intensive, probably I hired unskilled labor. So that's why the labor cost or the wages will be low. Uh, the, the third advantage of a labor intensive would be there is a lower risk of losses due to machinery breakdown here there won't be the problem of the machine is not working anymore and we have to send it to repair or to uh, someone to fix the machine or whatever it is no we don't have that problem but also you will see later on in the next slide when i'm talking about the disadvantages the labor might be sick okay the fourth one workers may take more pride in their work and produce better quality products so because the the firm or the owners are um, appreciating what the workers are doing the workers would feel happy and they want to show that their production is becoming also better and of uh, better quality okay uh, fifth one labor can be used more flexibly than installed and therefore immobile machinery this is number five um, and number six, the last one would be product quality is easier to observe, monitor and change at each stage of the production process. How can I monitor the quality here better than the quality here? I know for a fact the quality uh, of the machine, that's it. It's, uh, it's of a good quality. But here when I'm talking about labor, they are not producing in massive amounts. So um, it's little amounts and the manager could easily keep an eye on whatever the labor is doing. Now let's start with the disadvantages of capital intensive production. Machinery and other capital equipment can be very expensive. So if I wanna rely on machines, to buy the machines, to pay for insurance for the machine, uh, to pay for spare parts for the machine, all of these could cost a lot of money. But on the long run, definitely, as you can see, it was part of the advantages, on the long run, the cost will be lower because I don't have to pay for labor anymore. The second one, maintenance cost, we already explained it in number one. Uh, third one now if I get new machines I need to pay for training for the labors that I have in my company why because probably they don't know how to use the machine so in order for them to use the machine properly I need to make sure uh, that uh, they won't make any mistakes they will know how to operate the machine I will pay probably for training courses so it could be also costly the fourth one, it may be difficult to change production. For example, if consumer demand or technology changes, and we already have the machine installed and a lot of machine, then there would be a big problem to, you know, uh, just change the machines that I have and upgrade to other machines. So it is a costly operation. Uh, technological advancement also we are in the um, 
we are facing a lot of competition and companies are um, trying to produce a better quality product, hiring better machines and so on. This could be a disadvantage for the firm as well. Uh, breakdowns and power cuts will hold up production. So if a machine breaks down, I cannot produce anymore because I'm, I was relying on capital. The last one, it is not suitable for many services industries. We already spoke about it at the beginning of this lesson. And for example, we spoke about teachers, we spoke about um, hospitals. Okay, I use capital while I'm explaining, but the school relies mainly on labor and not on the machine. I can teach without capital. You just need me as a person. Now, finally, we will be talking about the disadvantages of labor intensive production. So when the company relies on workers and not on capital, what are the problems or the challenges that it might face? Wages and other employment costs can be high. Now, before we said it as an advantage that it might be low because I might be hiring unskilled labor. But if I want to hire skilled labor and to make my production of a better quality, they will be asking for a much higher salary. Okay, and we have to pay for them uh, insurance. We have to pay sick leaves, maternity leaves, uh, tickets, accommodation, and so on. The list goes on. Um, the second disadvantage would be firms might find it difficult to find and hire workers with the proper skills. Okay, and also probably we might need to train these workers as well. Since we are, the third one, since we are relying on labor, they might be part of the trade union. And because they are part of the trade union, industrial disputes my, might occur. Fourth uh, disadvantage, um, retrained. We already spoke about the training. So training workers also is costly. So here, as you can notice, uh, we have training uh, uh, workers for the new production process in uh, the labor intensive. And here also it's a disadvantage for capital intensive training workers in order to use the machines properly. The fifth one, average costs might be high. Why? Because as we spoke about it, a decrease in average cost is an advantage if we rely on capital. That was the first advantage that we spoke about. Finally, labor intensive methods are best suited to smaller scale production, not massive production. Why? Because each customer would want a specialized or personalized product. And because I am relying on labor and not on machines, I can afford doing that. Um, so right now, this is the last objective. We will be talking about what determines the demand for the factors of production. Okay, so uh, what will make the company demand more labor or less capital? Okay, I will explain uh, this. Uh, it's very easy. The first one, sorry, the first one would be consumer demand for their products. How much output consumers demand, we call this derived demand, demand for factors of production, increase if consumers increase their demand. So, if I I'm, a, I'm the firm, okay, and I find out that people are demanding more of my product. So, because people are demanding more of my product, what will happen? I will demand more factors of production. And then I will decide whether I need to hire more labor or hire more um, capital. Okay? Uh, factor prices. So, if wages are factored here, this word factor, I'm talking about factors of production. Factor prices, if I'm talking about lab labor is becoming very expensive and insurance premiums became really expensive, so probably I would stop demanding labor and I will rely more on capital and my company will become capital intensive. Um, third one, factor availability. So probably a shortages of skilled labor. I cannot find a skilled labor anymore and I need to continue with my production. Then I will rely more on capital. Factor productivity, who is more productive? So if labor are, lab, 
uh, labor are more productive than um, machines, I would hire more labor and less um, capital and vice versa. Okay, so the demand for labor, if labor are more productive, will increase.